All right, I'm gonna get into some real fundamentals of what we're gonna do this year uh, in digital electronics. Now we're getting into like the meat and potatoes. Uh, we're gonna get into combination logic, okay? This is the good stuff, all right? You're gonna spend a lot of time breadboarding and, and getting through some of the issues uh, and troubleshooting things like this. This is, this is it though, I mean, this is logic. Uh, this is how a lot of different things that we use in real life work and all of these different logic gates that we're going to talk about over the course of the next few lectures are in your phone, your computer, pretty much in everything that we use. All right, so we're going to start about what a combinational logic sequence is or what a combination is and then what sequential logic is. All right, and then how we're going to put those together. Uh, so we're going to talk about your AOI logic and ORs and inverters. And we're going to start looking at simple circuit design for combo logic. All right, you guys are going to build that in multi-sim. Okay, so combo logic. All right, we have a certain number of inputs. All right, so on your breadboard companion that you soldered, we have four switches. Those are considered inputs. Okay, and then we can have different outputs uh, that we're going to use uh, those inputs or those switches to control things for. Okay, now sequential logic. That's going to be the fun stuff. That's when we start getting into flip-flops and memory and those sort of things. Uh, where we're going to actually start making processes go automatically uh, through all of our designs and logic. Versus having to hit a button and things like that. So we're going to take some of the designs that we do with combo logic. All right, and implement sequential logic. So they automate, kind of like doing a stoplight. Uh, essentially, that's going to be one of our uh, things we're going to, projects that we're going to breadboard and make do. Okay, so what we really want to do, the general form for all logic gate, okay, is this, if we have a two input symbols, we have an X and a Y, okay, an X and a Y. So this is a truth table. Everything that we're going to develop as well. So everything that we're going to do is going to be based off of understanding a truth table and how it works, all right? We're, we are always going to have a minimum of two inputs except for when we do an inverter, okay? so. We will have some form of a logic symbol there, whether it's an AND gate, an OR gate, an inverter, or we're gonna have some form of an output. It could be X multiplied with Y or X added to Y. I'm, I'm, I'm loosely using the term add because we don't really add. It's called an OR, there's a plus sign, but we're gonna get into that in a little bit. All right, so unfortunately, right, there's no such thing as a smiley face gate, but this is just here uh, this is to generalize what we're going to do. We're going to have some sort of inputs, we're going to put them into a logic gate, and then create some outputs. The first okay, gate that we're going to take a look at is called the AND gate. So you need to make sure that you pause the video and write everything down about this AND gate. All right, right now we have two inputs, but there are three input AND gates, four input AND, put AND gates. There's multiple input AND gates, so this is just the one that we're going to use the most in here. And when we breadboard, we're going to breadboard the AND gate. Okay, that number on it is a 74 LS08N. Now the N can be a P or different things like that. The important part for us to know about that number, okay, is the 08. Alright, an 08 is an AND gate. So when we start using multi-SIM and doing all of our circuits, uh, in multi-SIM you need to know what's an 04, what's an 08, what's a 32, uh, what the gate numbers are. And it says it specifically on the top of the chip, all right? So some of the uh, stuff that you guys have soldered where we've had to put chips in, all right? You've had to read the number and put them in the correct location. Now, how do we read the output? We're going to call the output Z in this case. And it means X and Y. And it can be written all three ways. We can say X with the times Y, X dot Y, or just X, Y next to each other. I like to write it as the last way. Uh, it's less confusing and you don't, that way you don't think that you're doing some sort of mathematical operation. Because this is all in binary. All in binaries. We're dealing with a zero or a one and how those two work together when we have an AND gate. All right. Inside an AND gate, there's multiple transistors. All right. There's a BJT uh, transistor, bipolar junction transistor. That's what sits inside those gates. And we'll get that in, into that a little bit more depth a little later on. Okay. But know that it, it's an AND gate. This truth table is very important because it tells us based on the inputs that we put into the gate what we're going to get out of the gate. This is how we're going to control signals and turn LEDs on and off and that sort of thing. 
So this truth table is specific to an AND gate. So if I have two inputs, zero and zero, if X is zero and Y is zero, an AND gate will always output a zero if both inputs are zero. An AND gate will also output a zero as long as one of the inputs is a zero. So when X is zero and Y is one, Z will output a zero. When X is one and Y is zero, Z will output a zero. The only way for an AND gate to produce a one is if both inputs are one. That's why we kind of write it like multiplying because one times one is one, but the rest, right? Zero times zero is zero, zero times one is zero, one times zero is zero. You can kind of think of it that way. We're not really multiplying, but that's what an AND gate is doing. So in order for a three input AND gate to produce a one, all three AND, are all three inputs on that three input AND gate have to be a one. If any one of them is a zero, the output will be a zero. So this is an AND gate and that's how they work. Now we always write them in this order that you see the inputs X and Y. We always go zero, zero, then zero, one, then one, zero, and one, one. That's us counting to three starting at zero. That's us going zero, zero means zero, zero, one means one, one, zero means two, and one, one means three. Okay? So that's us counting, but we have to implement this AND gate when we start going through our logic expressions later on. This is called an OR gate. An OR gate. This means X or Y. Okay, notice the output Z can only be written as X or Y. We don't say X plus Y. We say X or Y. And it's important that we understand the OR piece. Okay, this is going to carry through when you guys are seniors and you're programming the PLCs and all the big equipment uh, that's in the classroom as well. So it is important that we do this. All right, there's a truth table for every logic gate out there. So if we have X or Y, if I have zero or zero, my output will always be a zero. I'm going through the truth table here. If I have a zero or a one, my output will be a one. If I have a one or a zero, my output will be a one. And if I have a one or a one, my output will be a one. So with an OR gate, we will always output a one as long as one of the inputs is a one. All right, so if this was a three input OR gate, as long as one of those inputs was a one, our output would be a one. Okay, it's gonna be, it's very important that you understand these truth tables. Because uh, there's going to be a lot that we're going to do with these and be very involved with them. Also, notice how the symbol is drawn. I'm going to step back just for a second and look at the AND gate. That's how we draw an AND gate, right? It's, got, it's flat on one side and then it comes and curves around. The OR gate kind of has an, an arc in the middle and comes to a point. It's not as rounded in the front. It's an arc. So when we draw those and we look at schematics, we need to know these symbols as well. The number that you need to pay attention to for the OR gate out of the 74LS32N is the 32. Okay, just as we saw that the OH right here is an AND gate, the 32 is an OR gate. Okay, you're probably going to ask me multiple times in class. I'm going to tell you to either look it up or remember it. So you got to make sure that you remember that a 32 is an OR gate. Very, very important for us, okay? Lastly, we have the inverter gate. The inverter gate. Look at the number, it's a 74LS04N. Okay, so a 04 is an inverter. It does exactly what it says. We're inverting the signal. So if we look at the truth table, notice that this gate only has one input. So if I put a zero in, I get a one out. If I put a one in, I got a zero out. That's all an inverter does is it changes the signal. And I want you to think of these signals as such. Zero and one. Zero is off, one is on. Zero is false, one is true. Those are the kind of words that we need to use when we start thinking logically. 
Okay, notice the output symbol here is a little different. Z equals X bar. Okay, that's called the not signal. It means not X. That means we're using an inverter. All right, an X with a bar over it, a straight bar over it. That's the, that's not X. Because, right, because X is one, the output would be zero, so it would be not X. Okay, sometimes we call the inverter a not gate just for that reason. So this is an inverter. So now we've done AOI logic. A is and, O is for or, and I is for inverter. A lot of your electronics are based on this. They're based on NAND and OR tech too, but the fundamentals are based on an AND gate, an OR gate, and an inverter, all in sort of some sort of combination to produce an output. So that's why this is combo logic, okay? Some sort of combination. So very, very important. So anytime I'm talking AOI logic, I'm talking AND, OR, and inverters gates. Okay, we're gonna use these to do a different combination of things to produce different projects this year. So like, I'm gonna make you do like a stoplight. We're gonna do our date of birth project. All right, uh, we're gonna go through an example here where uh, we're gonna implement a combo logic uh, piece based on AOI logic. So it's very important. Make sure that you know an 08 is an AND gate, a 32 is an OR gate, <clears throat> and an 04 is an inverter. All right, so we're going to get through some uh, some different challenges with this, but by the end of the year, I promise you, uh, you're going to know and understand AOI gates. All right, so let's do an example here. So we have a scenario going on. All right, so we're going to review a design and operation of a combo logic circuit using AOI logic. Okay, so this is a basic, basic, basic security kind of design for you know in your vehicle, but it's more the thought process. All right, out of anything when you get through one of these. All right, so it says the design control, so the safety buzzer in a car was designed to do or to meet the following spe specifications, okay? This is important, and you need to write this down on your side notes when you're doing this problem because this tells us everything we need to know. It says the buzzer is on whenever the door is open or key is in the ignition, so the door is open or the key is in the ignition, and the seat belt is not buckled, okay? Then you're gonna get an audible alarm or a buzzer in your car. Does that make sense? So like you guys, you know, you have your car uh, at home and you like, you've left the keys in it or your parents have left the keys in it in the ignition just for a second, uh, and the car's not on, but you open the door, you hear that ding, ding, ding song, or song or sound, right? Or, you know, your lights are on. You forgot to turn your lights off if you don't have auto lights. Your car's gonna ding at you, all right? So you're gonna get an alarm or you're driving down the street, right? And you hear an alarm and it's because someone forgot to put the seatbelt on in their car. So this is, you know, real life example here. However, all right, so just to reiterate it again, the buzzer is on when the door is open or the key is in the ignition and the seatbelt is not buckled. So look at the key words there, or, and, and not. We're gonna have to do some sort of combination with those to produce this circuit. So we always create a truth table. A truth table meets all the different scenarios that can possibly happen with this situation, okay? So this truth table. So we write down our scenarios. We have a seat belt, we have a key, and we have a door. Okay, so we have to be able to read this. The output is what? The buzzer. So we have three inputs right now. The inputs, the seatbelt, the key, and the door. So those are our three inputs, and we have to do them in a specific order. So when you copy this table and you write this table down, it's very, very imperative, all right, that you write down this eight bits just the way you see it. Zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one, one one zero and one 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 important that order can't change and that's the order we go in when we do this and i just read off the truth table piece for the seat belt the key and the door okay so we got to remember what sets off the buzzer it's written at the top the door is open or the key is in the ignition so that means as long as one of those is a one or a zero we have to interpret what the one and the zero really means Okay, 
As long as one of those is a one, the buzzer should be on. Okay? And it says, and the seat belt is not. So if one of those is a one and the seat belt is not buckled, we should be getting a one. Okay? All right, so let's go through this. The seat belt, the criteria for it, and this is when you do your design. A zero means the seat belt is not buckled. A one means the seat belt is buckled. So think of that as true and false. All right, the seat belt is not buckled is a zero. The seat belt is buckled, it's a one. For the key, if it's not in the ignition, it's a zero. If it's in the ignition, it's a one. If the door is not open, it's a zero. It's a one if the door is open. So we got to think about true and false. So everything that's true is a one. Everything that's false is a zero. So we can do that based on the buzzer, right? So the buzzer is zero if it's off, one if it's on. So let's look at the first scenario. We have a zero, a zero, and a zero for the seatbelt, the key, and the door. All right? So, we have the seatbelt is not buckled, the key is not in the ignition, and the door is not open. We should not have a buzzer. So, the buzzer will be zero. Okay? Now, here's the combination. The combination is the key is in the ignition and the seatbelt is not buckled. So, that part's got to be anded together, and then the door is the or piece. So, let's go through the next line. I'm going to read seat belt, key, and door in that order. I'm going to go zero for the seat belt, zero for the key, one for the door. So, seat belt is zero, means it's what? Not buckled. The key is not in the, in the ignition, but the door is open. So, since the door is open, we should have a buzzer. Okay, because the door is the or piece. Remember, as long as one of those was a one out of the door or the other scenario we're going to have put a one now let's look at the next one we're on i'm on line three the seat belt is not buckled the key is in the ignition and the door is open okay so we're anding sorry we're we're oaring the door we're anding the seat belt in the ignition so we're anding what zero and one What's zero and one? Zero, okay? But we have the key and the seatbelt's not buckled, okay? So we're gonna get a one there, okay? The buzzer is on. Next, we have the seatbelt is not buckled and the key is in the ignition and the door is open, zero, one, one, we should have an alarm, right? Then look at our next scenario. The seat belt is buckled, the key is not in the ignition, okay? So we have one zero there, that produces a zero, and the door is not open, so it's a zero, so the buzzer should be a zero. Going through the next line, we have the seat belt, is buckled, the key is not in the ignition, so one and zero there, that produces a zero, but the door is open, or the door is open. So since the door is open, there should be a one and the buzzer should be on, okay? Let's look at the next scenario. The seat belt is buckled, the key is in the ignition, so that should produce what for us? Nothing, because we only get a one there if the seat belt is not buckled and the key is in the ignition, right? And then it says, or the door is open. The door is zero, so the door is closed, so we will not have an alarm. Then lastly, we have a one and one. The seat belt is buckled and the key is in the ignition. So that's gonna produce a zero piece for us there but the door being open, that's or, well we have a one and a one, sorry. So that produces a one, all right, for that scenario, but since the, it's opposite for us, since the key is uh, in the ignition, but the seat belt is buckled, that part's gonna be a zero, but the door is open, 
So we will have a buzzer. So you gotta be careful how it meets that criteria that's on the right hand side that outlines what's going on. All right, so now that we have a truth table, we pay attention to what we call the min terms. The min terms are when the output is a one. All right, and we're gonna design and build that into a circuit now. That's this circuit here. Now, we gotta think about the criteria and how we develop this circuit. So, it's going back to reading this script. The door is open or the key is in the ignition and the seat belt is not buckled. Okay, so notice the first line, we have the seat belt, okay? And each one connects to a switch. So if it's touching the five volts, it's a one. If it's touching ground, it's zero. So if it's touching five volts, we call it a true. If it's touching zero, we call it a false. So notice after seat belt, we have an OR gate because it's right here, okay? There's an OR. So we have this, the seat belt is, I'm sorry, is not, the OR comes later, I'm, I apologize for that. The seat belt is not buckled, right? So right here, the seat belt, if we read this line, the seat belt is not buckled. So right here, we have a knot gate that's tied to the seat belt. That means the seat belt is not buckled. And the key is in the ignition, right here. The key is in the ignition and the seat belt is not buckled. That's why there's an AND gate that's tied to the key switch and to the output from the seat belt. The seat belt is not buckled and the key is in the ignition. So that's where we place the AND gate. So the scenario is the seat belt's not buckled and the key is what? In the ignition or, so that's an output right there that goes into an OR gate or, right, the door is open. So I want you to flash back and forth or, or draw this circuit, okay, and then right above it so that you can understand the verbiage that's right here. The door is open or the key is in the ignition and the seat belt is not buckled and how that translates to the logic here. The final output is the buzzer. These switches right there, those toggle through all of our zero, zero, zero. Right now the switches are all in zero, zero state. Okay, and they're gonna toggle through zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one, and one, one, one. That covers every possible scenario. And I'll show you as we go through it here in a second what that's gonna look like, okay? so. I just verbally went through it, but I want you to see here in this scenario. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going through the logic here. The buzzer for us is just a little probe that's giving off a light that when it goes on. Okay, so for us, the five volts, right, is true. The zero volts, the ground is false. All right, so we're gonna follow red with the truth and green with the false as we go through this. All right, so and the logic table or the truth tables here for us to go through the logic as we're doing this. So we're gonna go through the first scenario, zero, zero, zero. All the switches are in zero, zero, zero. They are tied to ground right now. So what happens? What happens? All right, so zero, notice the green is zero. So what happens? As if we look at the seatbelt, we put a zero in and we get a one out of that inverter. And then we have a one anded with a zero at that AND gate, which outputs a zero, which goes to the OR gate, okay? And the door is going into the OR gate as a zero. So since those are all zero, the buzzer will not be on. Let's look at the next scenario here. Now we're looking at zero, zero, one. Notice the switch on the door changed. It's now up and connected to five volts. So we are putting zero, zero, one in. The logic, the buzzer, should turn on, all right? Because there's a one hitting that OR gate. Anytime there's a one hitting that OR gate, the output's gonna be a one. Let's look at the next scenario in the table. So the scenario we're looking at is the highlighted dark purple one you'll kind of see as we toggle through. So now this is zero, one, zero. Notice the key is now connected to five volts and the door and the seat belt are connected to zero volts. All right, so this is zero, one, zero. 
the output will be a 1. And I'm, we're just going to go through the table now. We have 0, 1, 1. So that notice the switch on the seatbelt is going to 0. The key and the door are both going to 5 volts, which is 1. So 0, 1, 1. Then we have 1, 0, 0. So the 5 volts gets a 1. The key and the door are getting a 0. And the buzzer is not on. Okay, so hopefully this helps you understand as we're going through the table here, the logic. Because when you guys breadboard later on, you're gonna write, you're gonna print out your circuit and write like one zero zero or zero one one on your circuit and go through and check it. This is a way you will troubleshoot. All right, let's look at the next line in the table here. We have one zero one. The buzzer should turn on. Okay, and remember in multi-sim, how are we gonna do this? We draw the circuit and then we hit the play button and then we toggle the three different switches. All right, this should work for us in the online version too. So I'll make sure uh, we can do that too with the multi-sim online, okay? All right, let's look at the last couple lines in the table. This is 110, so notice the seat belt and the key are tied to five volts. The door is going to zero and the buzzer is off in this scenario. And then lastly, 111, everybody's getting five volts and there's an OR gate with a one going to it, so the buzzer turns on. So this is called combination logic. We are combining an AND gate, an OR gate, and an inverter to meet a specific scenario. So this is really like the fundamentals and the background of how we control everything digitally. All right, and you guys are gonna breadboard these. We physically have all these IC chips. Uh, they're the ones that you put in like your breadboard companion and then your solder, uh, your light, your flashing light kit, all right, your random number generator, all right, and the piano, okay? So these all have these different chips that we put in. So what do those chips look like on the inside, right? When we first did the, uh, the very first soldering project, right, you had to go and check for shorts and opens. Well, what were you checking? The pin numbers, okay? These pin numbers mean something. So on the inside of those chips physically, Okay, we can see the inverter chips all the way on the left, right? That little bubble means to invert on the, on the inverter. So we can see what pin one is. Pin one is an input to the inverter. Pin two is an output. I'm looking at the pin numbers. You can see them, they're kind of small. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven's where the ground is, okay? And then uh, I kind of went through a lot of this with you guys when you were soldering. But those are the pin numbers. Okay, so there are six logic gates on the inverter. On the AND gate, that's the middle, the middle chip. There's four AND gates on one chip. So notice pin one and pin two are inputs and pin three is an output. So this is how you'll breadboard it later on. All right, and the OR gate's the same as the AND gate. One and two are inputs, three is an output, four and five are inputs, six is an output. So you can use up to four logic gates on one chip. So you guys are going to have to remember that when you breadboard that there's multiple gates on one chip. Okay? So that's how all of those relate to what we're seeing. So there's the OR gate, right? And we like to write the wire numbers on your drawing. You can turn this on when you do your logic uh, as well. That way you can just connect the numbers on the wires. It makes it very easy. The 1 corresponds to the input. The 2 corresponds to the output on the chip. Okay, same with the AND gate. One and two are the inputs, three is the output, and then uh, one and two are the input, three is the output on that OR gate. So when we breadboard, we only need one gate okay, when we're doing that. You also have to hook up power and ground. So notice pin 14 on all these goes to VCC. It's gonna get five volts. And uh, pin seven goes to ground. Okay, so that each chip has to get power and ground when you guys breadboard these as well. All right, so instead of using the probe like before, okay, we can use the LED. All right, remember the LED is the light emitting diode. So we have to protect it with a resistor, so I'll probably have you guys breadboard this up. All right, we can use our breadboard companion so that the breadboard companion is gonna supply the five volts and your first three switches. Okay, and then on the breadboard, we have to breadboard the logic gates. So make sure that you're paying attention to this and we'll have the schematic and we're gonna breadboard this, all right? So 
We need a drop resistor R1 so that the LED doesn't blow up. The LED is going to represent our buzzer. All right, so if you put this in a multi-SIM, you can use the probe as an output, or you can use this LED, and the LED does matter which direction you're going. Remember, the two arrows fill in when the LED is on, and when the LEDs look like they do now, uh, the two open triangles or arrows, whatever you want to call them, if they're open, all right, that means it's off. So how does the LED turn on? Okay, we, we have an anode and a cathode end. So remember we talked about the short leg and the long leg of the LED? Okay, it's polarized, meaning current can only flow one way. Current's gonna go from anode to cathode. You can consider anode positive, cathode as negative. So as long as we put that LED in the right direction, all right, the light will turn on. Now, the current is, show, is controlled by the resistor, so that's why we add this resistor Right here, if we didn't have a resistor, you would fry the LED. Uh, if you had it on a high enough voltage, it would pop off uh, the top. I want you to do in class, all right? So uh, I'll show you a video to prove it to you. If you need to, there's one on YouTube, you can look it up. But uh, please don't do that in class, okay? So what we have to do is make sure that when the logic coming out of the OR gate is five volts, okay, it's gonna go through the resistor and the LED will turn on. Okay, the anode is a higher voltage than the cathode. It's more anode than cathode at that time, that's why, that's how we verbalize it. So it turns on. In the bottom picture, all right, there's zero volts going to the LED, which is representing the buzzer. All right, so the LED is not on. The anode is not higher than the, the cathode in that case. So notice uh, what I also mentioned too. Uh, in the top picture, the two triangles are filled in, right, representing a red LED, because it was on, and in the bottom picture, the two triangles are empty, meaning that the LED is off when we're simulating this in multi-sim. All right, so in class, we're gonna go ahead and uh, you guys are gonna work this up. You're gonna draw it up and cat it in multi-sim and answer some questions, and then we are going to breadboard this to prove uh, that you understand what's going on. Uh, pretty simple breadboard, uh, but uh, everybody, uh, this is why it's imperative that we have a working breadboard companion so that we're able to control these and turn lights on. We can even use the LED that's on your breadboard companion to make it turn on and off when it's supposed to. So, uh, good stuff. All right, remember, email me if you have any questions or speak up in class uh, and ask, else I will see you guys in class.